Welcome to the Uncut Chronicles. I'm Crystal. I'm Andy. And we are coming to you with information and topics every day, such as culture, trending topics, shit your mammy probably don't need to hear. So come on in with us so we can share more with you about our day. Hey, I'm Crystal. And I'm Andy. And we want to welcome you to Uncut Chronicles, where we talk about all kind of shit that your mama don't need to hear. At all. Okay. So today, we are talking about the infamous food tour of Darius Cooks. Okay. Now, see, she over here taking long size already, y'all. Okay. So, for those who don't know, Darius has been doing a tour of the country. He's been stopping by restaurants. Um, predominantly minority-owned restaurants, um, actually predominantly black restaurants because minority would give you the impression that it's everybody under the minority wing, not the case. And so it's been a little sprinkle of that, mostly black-owned restaurants. So let's talk about how how this tour has gone. How has it been successful? How has it backfired? Andy, what you think? Y'all can see my fucking face right now. Disgust. Just fucking disgusting. And mayhem. I, let me tell you something. I don't like this man. Like, if he has no haters, it's because I'm gone off this earth. He literally went on this tour. And in the, and let's, let's backtrack before we even get into that. This the same motherfucker that had people eating in the garage for $250 of slave food. Whose garage? Who knows? Who knows? Went and charged people $250 to sit in a garage and eat slave food. A real garage? Automotive garage? Uh Somebody house garage. You lying. And and charged people to eat slop. Now, I love me some soul food, okay? I love me some soul food. I love to catch the itis and pass out and look like Loretta Devine in the hospital with a box of chicken. I love it. (laughs) First of all, you put some respect on Loretta. And I, and I have no shame in that. But my issue was, where is the culinary excellence in what you did? Now, mind you, I'm not I'm not a cook, okay? I'm not a cook. I don't cook. Let me just, let me just say that off the record. I, I don't cook. I don't like to cook. I like to eat, but I don't like to cook. I love to cook. <laughs> it stressed me out. So I don't do it. But to have somebody in here that can't even cook a chicken all the way through tell me my food tastes like shit, I will break my foot off in your motherfucking ass. You have lost your mind. And he's petty. I think for me, the food tour, first of all, great concept. Do a tour, go around the country, experience all these black-owned restaurants. Maybe you pick your favorite two in the city and you give a review on just your favorites. Why do you have to give us a review on what you don't like? Why do you have to... Go up one side. Hey, y'all, what do y'all look at the plating? And then the people people get on there and they go, okay, I give this about an 8 out of 10 or a 6 out of 10 or a 5 out of 10. People got to the point where he was he was rating the, the creativity of the plate. Then he was rating the flavor of the food. And he was rating the customer service. But it got to the point people were like, well, creativity based on what? Like a lot of people are like, well, Darius, what, what is your definition of creativity? So we can understand how you're rating this. People got to the point they just start saying, can you just get to the point and tell us if it's good or not? Do you like it or no? And so he would do that as well. But he just would drag these restaurants a bit. And I didn't feel like and it was the way I think in which it was done. Yes. It'd be one thing if he said, all right, guys, these things aren't my favorite, but this is what I loved at each one. He found something he loved at each one or I picked his top two. But he would drag them and then put the owner's own video. And I was like, oh, shit. It just got a little humiliated. People from different cities got upset. Um, People felt like he was just intentionally just making a mockery of the things that we do best and how people are surviving and feed people. I'm not saying it's all top tier. I didn't say you got to like all of them. Mm -hmm. What do you think about it? I mean, do you think it could have been done differently? Yes, it definitely could have been done differently. Um, I don't know why the fuck you think he Gordon Ramsay. I I don't know um, because he's not. He ain't got a star to his name or a business to his name. So, I mean, I don't don't quite know, but I, I feel like there's a difference between constructive criticism and just being an asshole. Mm -hmm. And he was just being an asshole. And me, you had this conversation, you know, off air where we were talking about 
how like in Oklahoma's instance where people come from different, you know, cities, countries, states, whatever, and their standard of, you know, what's good is different and people get offended easily and oh my God, and this well, this is the topic. Well, that's Oklahoma, baby. That shit ain't gonna fly in Baltimore. This should be one star restaurant in Baltimore. That shit ain't gonna fly. But not to get off topic. That's another story. But I feel like he could have gave better constructive criticism. Like they had one video of him when he was talking to one of the owners and he was like, these collard greens had too much vinegar in it. And this had too much this in it. And you see how my food look like this? This is supposed to look like this. Do you have a restaurant? Outside of the $250 you charge people in the garage, do you have a restaurant? No. Um, do you have any type of culinary background, legitimate culinary background? No. So, who are you to set the standard for other people? Thank you. And what, and again, back to your question, what standard are you, like, what, what is it? But he didn't even choose some of the highest ranking restaurants in the areas. If you look at it, like, there are a couple here that have been James Beard awarded. Mm -hmm. he, he didn't go to all of those. No. He was very, very wise and a little strategic on where he chose. Because he knows they can't fight back. Mm. Like uh, Florence, mm -hmm. when he took the macaroni and cheese picture and um, when he took the macaroni and cheese picture and made it his profile picture, that shit pissed me off. That pissed me off so bad because that show, you weren't there to really give an honest review. You was there to be messy boobs. And I hated that for them because while... Florence is historically known and I, you know, she put all her, her life and everything into her restaurant. That pissed me off because I'm like, there was, even if you didn't like the food and like how things were done, there was a way you could have did it. Mm -hmm. And it felt so just <clears throat> nasty. Like it was just nasty. Well, that's what I'm saying. Is he just a predator in a community lurking and lurching off of what we do and then doing it all for the sake of entertainment? Is he a cultural predator? Yes. Um, he's a culture vulture of sorts. And I think him putting the extra razzle-dazzle on things makes it entertaining <clears throat> for people who like to be entertained in that way. But I think it's so disrespectful. And he leaves negative reviews at some of these restaurants, and he could never perform to those standards. Some of these restaurants have been in business 50-plus years. You can't get them for five minutes consecutively that wins an award for anything. That, and you fucking <clears throat> sat there. And like, okay, so Keith Lee. I don't know if you heard of Keith Lee. He does this type of thing where he goes on culinary tours and he said, well, you know, I'm into food because I'm a nutritionist. So I have to understand, you know, ins and outs of food, whatever. Keith Lee has had like his whole Keith Lee versus Atlanta. That, that shit was it was funny, but it was sad. But Keith Lee gives honest reviews where they're not nasty. And the first thing he says, do not go and attack these businesses. Darius got to ante up the whole group because he wants to feel validated in his nastiness. And he has to ante up his little following yep, yep. to go attack these people and go attack these businesses because they didn't agree with what he said. And that yep. shit pisses me off mm -hmm. because it's like, like you said, when he's being strategic and attacking small black owned businesses that may not have that following to fight that. He feels validated in sending his little troops to tear down these restaurants. Whereas Keith Lee, he doesn't do that. He'll tell you straight up, do not go attack these businesses. This was my experience. This is the thing I had. You may not have experienced that, but I'm giving you my personal experience with this. That doesn't make it law or that's just how the business is. This is my experience. And I feel like Darius doesn't lead with that transparency because he gets off on being messy because that's what gets him paid. Being messy. You know what? That's true. I mean, there's an audience for everything mm -hmm. and y'all are clapping him up. Mm -hmm. And I just have to wonder why. Because people are, it's just like Tasha K and her little following. People love nastiness. They love, they don't care who's, who it is as long as it's not them. They love nasty. They thrive off of negativity. And he's one of those people where he thrives off of negativity. He lives for it. Do you think he would do his food tour again where he's charging people per plate and all that? You think he would do that again? That type of tour, the culinary thing where he was cooking for people? Yeah, because he's a scammer. Nah, he's a scammer. He's a scammer. He is a scammer. 
He is a scammer. Um, but mm-hmm. my question is, is do you think that on the heels of this, he'll start doing that again? Yeah. Because, yeah, I, I wholeheartedly believe it. And do you think that it's going to sell as well? Yes and no. Ooh. Yes, because there are people out there that live for that. Again, they live for that. They want to they see, they want to be nosy. Even if you don't like him, uh-huh. you're going to go because you're just out of curiosity of what the fuck is going on with him. Mm-hmm. No, because back to the scamming part, he's a fucking scammer. BBB literally has a fucking ban and warning against this man. Because he just, he's that terrible. He can't keep no fucking business. He scams people. I think he had like a, a sex toy and um, pots and pans. I know he had pots and pans yeah. and like, um, and like oven mitts and stuff like that, like kitchen I- items. Uh-huh. And people wasn't getting their shit. I heard, but I thought, I thought they were just running behind on it. I thought eventually they got it. They didn't ever get it. They weren't getting their shit. And then when people would ask in the comments, like you would do like, hey, I never got an order, blah, blah, blah. Don't you come in here with this shit telling me what you didn't get. You take that over there. That's how we tell to our customers? Scammer? Let's go ahead and file that good old complaint with your credit card company. Man, go ahead and call the bank and get your money back because you weren't getting that positive chance. And even and after that nasty attitude, say, hey, let me make sure my team gets in touch with you, right. figure out what's going on. I just had to cut that off and so anybody else start coming on here asking those questions. Well, if you getting that many questions, that means something is going on. You need to check in with your operational team. Why are you taking that out on the customer? That's a you problem. Oh, it's just his pettiness. It's like he's rude and petty and wants to cut people down all the time. But I don't think anybody's asking about what is he doing for himself. It's actually all about him. It's all about his vacations. It's all about what he thinks about the food. But he's not a chef. No. Doesn't own a restaurant. No. Doesn't cook on a regular for others. It's amazing. And I watched his lives when he cooked. And I was appalled. <gasps> what What did you see prepared? So he had one live. And I think this was after he got the weight loss surgery or mm-hmm. something. Mm-hmm. And he had his, like, um, drains. And the shit just, it disgusted me. And here's, here's why it disgusted me. Because if you're preparing food for people to eat... Cool, you got your little drains. Cover that shit up. Oh, yeah, a shirt. Put a shirt on. Cover that shit up. I don't want to see your drains, your blood next to chicken blood, and I'm sitting over here my concerned, like... Hurts. My stomach hurts, ma'am. Please is that shit going to mix together? Like, I, I, I don't want to know. The audacity. Like, if I go to restaurants where I know, like, I'm from Baltimore, so if I go to restaurants and I know that shit dirty, I don't want to see it. Okay? Just bring the food out. I don't care what goes on in the kitchen. <laughs> I know it's dirty. Out. Just I, the food out. I know the food dirty. I know the kitchen dirty, but the food busting. I don't want to see it. <laughs> I don't want to see it. <laughs> just so bring true. me the food. That's why I don't like Waffle House because it's dirty. I don't need to see what y'all doing. If you took my ham and cheese sandwich and did like that with your hand, I didn't want to see that. So now I can't eat it. So like I'm cool with what you want to do in the back. Don't show me that. So you to get on live and got your drains all by food and vegetables and and shit happens with drains and stuff like you know stitches can pop. Anything can happen. Why? Then he pulled the chicken out and the shit wouldn't even cook. Yeah. My other question is this. Um, I'm I'm just tired of seeing his dick in them drawers. I don't want to see it no more. And really and truly, I was wondering when somebody's gonna bring that up because if you are a cook or you or whatever you proclaim to be, what does that have to do with anything? Can that be a separate page for a separate journey? No. What what what, what are we really branding here? Nobody wants to see that I mean, chicken leg, wide back, linebacker built nigga in no draws. Okay. <laughs> I'm just my question is are, are we selling, you know, what are we selling here? Are we selling ass, you know? Or are we selling Brussels? What are we selling? Because I feel like he just personally advertises all his greatness. Uh, that he feels he's full of. And one day he in his drawers, one day he asking y'all to buy some tickets or something. The next day he's doing a food tour. The next day he's selling you a mixer. The next day, it's like, what are you really doing here? And why is this all about you? Like, all the time, it's you. Validation seeking. 
Uh, validation and I feel like he's one of those people whether the validation is good like the attention is good or bad uh-huh. he wants it he doesn't care he wants it he thrives off that because if you if you really took away his fan base he, he nobody would give a fuck this nobody is would true give a fuck. this is true um, I feel like at the end of the day he has a partner that entertains it too Oh, for sure. And a whole team was like, yeah, do more, do more, do more. There's always people like that that have yes men. He's very narcissistic in those ways. Extremely. Mm-hmm. And he needs a team full of yes men because if he really had a real team, people would tell his ass to sit down. This is true. And nobody's telling him to sit down because as long as he's cutting them checks and people benefiting off of his negativity, and I'm going to correct them. You think he's making good money on this tour? No. But... He posted something recently where he said, all y'all talking shit, but I'm still getting paid. And he posted it on the Facebook to show that he gets paid. For the engagement. Yes. And that's why I say he doesn't care if it's good or bad. He's going to get paid. Maybe not as much as he could get paid, but he gets paid at the end of the day. So that's where it is. So as long as people keep being a part of the show, he keeps making money and then y'all can keep being negative mm-hmm. towards whatever. But why would you even want to subject like things like I'm 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 into the culinary world because I'm a wide bag bitch and I like to eat. So I'm into the culinary world and I like knowing what's going on. (laughs) But at the same time, I'm like, why even ruin your reputation like that? Don't you think that closes doors for future collaborations? Oh, for sure. I wouldn't. That's why I said, why would you want Darius to sound off on any of your business? Darius would never listen. I'm not I'm not a mind reader, but I don't see Darius's mixers being on Oprah's favorite things. Never. Because he cut himself off with the motherfucking ankles. Like, you did such dumb, self-serving, narcissistic bullshit in the front that it meant that in the future, nobody would want to work with you at that level because you shitted on so many businesses and were so nasty that now you are a bad look for any major brand that wants to collaborate with you. And to be truthful, he had all the bells and whistles. You got food, you got rainbows, you got a mouth, you're colorful, you look kind of cute. Like, it was actually a good combination, but he fucked it over so bad that all his future business dealings will only get so high. It's going to say it's going to stay on C-list celebrity status, maybe D-list at best because of his intentions. You're nice to say D because I said Z. (laughs) Somebody likes to clap for him and it's very, they, they do exist. He's going to stay on that DZ list forever, and that's why. And it's crazy because when he first came out, I really liked him. There was hope, yep. I really liked him when he first came out. Yes. And then to watch his demise and his fall from grace, you know how much of a loser you got to be for somebody to want to demolish their own career just to take you down? There's literally another black cook, and she could not stand his ass so bad. She had a... When I tell you, she dragged that motherfucker's took him by the fat roll of his head and dragged that motherfucker back and forth down to, it, it ruined her career. That's how bad she dragged him. I said, do you know how much hate in her heart she had for you to drag you that bad? And she was right. She had facts. That's when it started that snowball effect and tumbling down on his career. And so that's what I'm saying. You have to be careful how you deal with people sure. because it can take you down too. So I think the reality is you got to be mindful. You can't collaborate with people who are bad for business in the now or in the future because there's certain things you can't get away from. And I think that um, I hope he takes a, a look back and reflects and does maybe like some rebuilding and cleanup, but it's going to take a lot. And I think there are a lot of other really dope chefs out there that can do amazing things. I think the culinary world does not have enough people of color leading. And I think that he uh, he's a poor steward of his opportunities. I think that's very unfortunate. Sure. You know, so that's just my opinion on it. But, you know, that's how I feel. So that's why I don't like him. I, I can't stand him. And I, and this crazy part was when he first came out, I loved him. Loved him damn bad. I used to love G. Garvin, too. Yes. Oh, where is he at? So oh. I like him. So, I mean, I just thought there's so many other like personalities with, with, with beards that do other dope stuff that are great cooks. And then here come this one. And I was so disappointed. Dragging I'm y'all grandmama's fried chicken. Yeah. Looking like he still ate half of it, but whatever. Anyway, my name is Crystal. And I'm Andy. And we are so glad you stopped by Uncut Chronicles. We're going to keep saying shit that your mama can't even uh, repeat. So, yeah. Mm-hmm.
Please don't buy no $250 plate from Darius. Thank you. Not nobody's garage ever. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Peace. The Uncut Chronicles is part of the Breaking Ice, Building Bridges community podcast platform brought to you by Possibilities. As we wrap up, Possibilities would like to give a special thank you to this episode's sponsor, Express Employment Professionals, paving the way for creative expression in our community. Their commitment to our vision allows us to continue to have these conversations. We are grateful for your continued support, Express Employment Professionals.